Welcome to June's Leaco Challenge. Today's problem is find the duplicate number. Give it an array of nums containing n plus 1 integers where the integer is in between 1 and n inclusive. Prove that at least one duplicate number must exist. Assume that there is only one duplicate number. Find that duplicate number. Okay. Say we're given a list like this, 1, 3, 4, Q2. 2 is the duplicate number. Same thing here, 3, 1, 3, 4, 2. This is a pigeonhole problem and we know that if there are n plus 1 integers and every number is between 1 and n, there's going to be at least one duplicate. And we can just know that intuitively. So how can we solve this? The first approach might be to sort the array and find the duplicate that way. But we have some caveats here. First, we can't modify the array, assume that the array is read only. And we can only use constant space, constant extra space. On top of that, our runtime complexity should be less than n squared. So that complicates things because if you can't sort it, then maybe you can use a set, but a set would not constitute constant space. So how can you solve this? To be honest, I've seen this problem before and I already know the solution. It's Floyd's algorithm, otherwise known as the Torres and Hare. And basically what you would do is set two pointers, one called, let's call it turtle, and one called hare. And we'll initialize those at the beginning of the list. Now we're going to have the total move ahead once one position while the hair moves two positions. And they'll follow the nums, whatever values that are given to us with these numbers here. But we'll use that number to indicate which position in the array we want to go to. And that's just the way that we could take advantage of this pigeonhole where each number each one of these numbers uh, is going to point to a position in an array. And if everything was distinct, there would not be a cycle. But because we know that there's one duplicate, there's going to be a cycle in here somewhere. So the first thing we're going to do is let's um, move up our turtle position one. So that's going to be just nums of the turtle position. And as for the hair, we're going to move it with the nums of the nums of hair. So that moves at one position. So while turtle does not equal hair, we're just going to continue this algorithm. So once they do equal one another, this is the position at which there's an intersection. And once we do that, we just move the turtle back to the beginning. And we do the same algorithm, except we're going to move the turtle on hair just one position now. After that, we can just return either turtle or hair, and we'll just return turtle, and that should solve our problem. So that does get accepted. Now, I want to look at the solution in a little bit more in detail. Um, you can see that there's like a couple approaches. First, you could sort it, but we know we can't do that. Set using some sort of hash. We also know we can't do that because of the space complexity. So this Floyd's tor tortoise and hare solution, um, yeah, basically, if you were to visualize this as like a linked list, that one here is where the cycle begins, right? And that's going to be the duplicate number. And if you think about that, that makes sense because if there's two ones, that's the position at which um, it's going to enter the cycle either way, like from the cycle itself, it's going to enter the cycle or from outside the cycle, it's going to enter, enter one. And all you really need to know, like I've seen some mathematical proofs of how, why this is the case, but I, I think it's just better to understand that when we have one that moves twice as fast and the tortoise who moves just one position, um, right when they intersect, this amount of distance is going to be the amount of distance it takes plus however many cycles like are inside there that's going to reach like if you start at this intersection and go from the beginning and go from this intersection, it'll meet right at the point at which the cycle begins. And I think that's just the best intuition you can really gain from this because I've studied this before and I found it pretty difficult to understand. Maybe one day I'll go into it more in detail, but I really think it's just better to have a basic understanding of, of this algorithm. And if you ever see some sort of cycle detection or, or this exact problem, 
you could uh, always bring that out. So thank you. Hope that helps.